Okay, let's do the lunar month. And there are two months, just like when we were talking about days. We had the solar day or the sidereal day, two different ways to define a day. There are two different ways you can define a month. The first one is uh, called sidereal, just like sidereal day. S sidereal means what again? Star. So this is the star month. And a month, generally speaking, is the amount of time it takes for the moon to go in its orbit. But precisely with respect to what? Sidereal month is with respect to the stars. So in this figure here, you see a new moon. We tend to start with the new moon, but you can start with any phase if you want. And so the moon is in some part of the sky. The sun happens to be there, but you can also imagine behind it, very far away, there are stars. And over the course of a month, the uh, moon goes around its orbit, and eventually it gets back to the same position with respect to the distant stars. And you can see it up here, over that month that Earth is moving in its orbit around the sun, and here's the moon back to the exact same geometric position with respect to the Earth and with respect to the distant stars. The stars are still off in that direction. So that's one side here a month. It's the true rotation period of the moon. But uh, we don't tend to focus on that because that's not the easiest thing to see, where the moon is with respect to stars. Because the moon is bright, it kind of blocks out, and it's hard to see the stars when the moon's up, particularly close to the moon. What we see more easily is the phase of the moon. Is it a new moon? Is it a full moon? Quarter? Give us. And so the phase cycle takes a little bit longer because Earth is what? Move in its orbit. So the direction of illumination is no longer coming from this direction, this direction here. It's coming from this direction down here. From our point of view, the sun is in a different part of the sky. So the illumination is different. The moon's going to have to go a little bit farther to get back between the sun and the earth and become a new moon again. So the sidereal month is 27.3 days. This phase cycle month, we call this synodic. Synodic month, where synodic is referring to the phase cycle. And this one, you're probably familiar with this, is 29 and a half days. So uh, 29 and a half days, it's shorter than the calendar month. It'd be nice if we could have an integer number of lunar months in our year, but it doesn't work out that way. So we have calendar months. They tend to be 30 days, of course. Some are 31. February's 28 or 29 on a leap year. But for the most part, these, the calendar months are longer than the lunar months, uh, whether it's synodic or sidereal. But sometimes you can fit a full synodic period in one month. So you, we call this a blue moon. Ever hear the phrase, once in a blue moon? If you have a full moon in the first couple days of the month, you'll have another full moon in the last couple of days, unless it's February, which is too short. So you can have two full moons in the same month, and we call that a blue moon. It's rare that it lines up that well. That's why you have the phrase, once in a blue moon. Just a little side tidbit there. Okay. Next, I have a question for you. We've talked about, here we've talked about the orbit, the revolution of the moon around the Earth. What about its rotation? Does the moon rotate? No? And yes, okay, so we have two answers here. Well, most people say no. Why would you say no? Because what? We don't see the other side. Yeah, that's the, that's the answer. Yes, people say well, it's not rotating because we always see the same side of the moon. And that's true. But let me put up a picture of a, a non-rotating moon, a diagram of a non-rotating moon. So here's the moon, and we got crate, just moons covered with craters. Let's just paint one red and one blue. And so you know, you just have to visualize it, or you know, send the astronauts back with a lot of paint. But uh, here's the new moon configuration. Let's say the red crater is pointed toward it. Then uh, it comes over here. If the moon's not rotating, we now see both the red crater and the blue crater. And over here, we'll see the blue crater. So if the moon's not rotating, we would see the other side of the moon half an orbit later. It would be carried around to the other side, and then back here. So let me ask you now, is the moon rotating? Yes. And strangely, it's rotating at exactly the same angular rate that it's revolving. It's actually not strange. There's a good physical reason for it. But here's the real scenario. Let's say the red is the side that's facing us, and it's always facing us because it's rotating at the sidereal rate. The sidereal month, 27.3 days, this is also the rotation period of the moon. So why is that? 
Let me spend just a... When we get to Lesson 6 and talk about the Earth-Moon system in detail, we're going to talk about tides, and like the oceans. And that actually has a lot to do with why this is. This is not a cosmic coincidence. There's a good physical reason for it. And I'll just kind of preview that a little bit. So here's the Earth, and here's the Moon. I'll draw the Moon in a second, but let's say it's over there. The Moon is pulling on the Earth. The Moon has a gravitational field. And it tends to stretch the Earth out a little bit. And since the, the oceans are more malleable than the rock, it, it lifts our oceans. It's kind of easy to understand why oceans are lifted here. They're also lifted on the backside. That's a detail I'll explain when we get to it. But imagine the gravitational field of the moon stretching out the Earth in its direction. And we spin, you know, the moon's moving slowly. Over the course of a day, it doesn't move much. These oceans, they kind of want to stay pointed towards the moon. Meanwhile, we're rotating underneath them. So you go high tide, low tide, high tide, low tide, and kind of the tides. But there's also a back tide, a back reaction. Earth is bigger, stronger, and so it stretches out the moon. No oceans on the moon, but we actually stretch the rock. Um, not that much. It's not shaped like a potato. You can't even see it with the eye, but it is stretched a little bit. So as it's going around the Earth, I meant to zero that up. If it's going, imagine this side here. It's deeper in the gravitational field. If it's rotating at a different rate and it's revolving, it would get lifted up out of Earth's gravitational field. And that's a lot of mass to lift. I mean, if you've picked up a weight, weights are heavy, it takes energy to pull something out of the gravitational field. This takes energy. It generates a lot of friction. which The frictional forces inside the moon will slow its rotation until, over time, it works itself out such that it's rotating at the same rate that it's revolving. The stretching we call tidal forces, and once it settles down, into this configuration where it rotates at the same speed that it revolves, kind of the lowest energy, least friction, least resistance configuration, we call that tidal locking. One side is locked towards the inner body, 